All right, so this is gonna be a comprehensive guide to the CAGE system. And I'm making this course uh, as really a prerequisite to all the videos that I do every week at Active Melody because I'm always referring to this and I thought it would be good to put this out there for every, anybody that maybe you don't know what the CAGE system is or you don't really understand how to, how to use it or how it works. That's what this little mini course is. It's just a really uh, thorough explanation of what CAGE is. CAGE, by the way, is not an acronym for anything. It's just five chord shapes, the C chord, A chord, G, E, and D. That's where caged comes from. Um, and I'm talking about first position chords, the chords we learned down here, those first chords you learned to play. When I first started playing guitar, I, would, I, was, I learned those chords, but then I would watch somebody play and they'd be playing chords all over the neck or they'd be soloing all over the neck. And I'm always thinking like, how do you do that? Everything I knew was down here in the first three, frets and I didn't know how to translate any of that to the rest of the neck. That's all caged is. It's just a logical grouping of these different sections of the neck so that when we're playing up here, we're playing in a certain neighborhood and you need to be able to understand that. So as I go through these lessons that I do every week and I talk about the A shape or the E shape, it's all coming from this, uh, this material. So the first thing that I'm going to assume you know how to do as a little prerequisite to this course is know those five chord shapes. Now I'm talking about the C chord, the A chord, the G chord, the E chord, and the D. So hopefully you know how to play those chord shapes. I'll put the, put the tab up on the screen if you need, um, need to, that. But I'm, a, I'm gonna assume you know how to make those chords. So that's the first uh, little bit that you need to know. Once you know that, you've kind of got the roadmap to be able to do the rest of this. Now, there's five chord shapes, as we just discussed, but there's two main ones, and we're gonna start with the two main ones. The other three are kind of extra. You need to know all five, but it's, I think you can get by with a lot just knowing these first uh, two that we're gonna learn. In fact, when I played, I played for years in a band and all I knew were these two shapes. Nobody ever explained cage to me. This wasn't anything that somebody sat down. It wasn't until years later, really until the internet. Uh, you know, I started watching videos on YouTube, probably until YouTube that I understand, oh, I was actually playing, uh, you know, I was using the cage system and didn't realize it. Okay, so we're gonna take a look at, we're gonna start with uh, the first shape, which is gonna be our E shape. So we're starting with the E first. And uh, if I play an E chord, the way that we all know how to play it, down here in first position, we call first position this area. First three frets or so, that's first position. Um, that's an E chord. Now if I wanted to play an F chord, I should just be able to slide that up, right? So E, think of a piano. What's the next key on the piano? There is no black key between the E and the F, so you go E and then you go up one, it's an F. So I should just go like this, right? Well, that's not really an F. I mean, it's kind of an F. There's a little bit of a, an F. That's an F. But then you've got these open strings. And this is the, the open string thing is the dilemma that we have as fretted instrument players, guitar players, is because when you move from this shape up to here, you've still got the open strings that were ringing out from your E chord. So think of it that way. When you're playing an E chord like this, you've actually got one, two, three strings that are just open, that are not fretted at all. But they kind of are fretted, they're just fretted with the nut. The nut is this piece right here at the, the head of the guitar. So if I play my E chord and I use different fingerings, so I've got my middle finger, ring finger, pinky, I can slide them up and then I've got my index finger free to bar. And all I did was replace where the nut is. So you can see logically what's going on there. We just took this shape and we slid it up. And if I bar, so now I'm playing this note, this note, and this note, right? Which were the open notes before. Now I've got an F chord but I'm, I've got an F chord using the E shape. That's really the, the logic behind it. Now, here's the part that I left out in that previous video, and this is, this is cr critical. Um, how do you know that's an F chord? Well, this comes in, down to connecting the chord itself to strings, to the string names. And so we're gonna start off uh, you, you really need to know the names of the notes on your sixth string, which is your low E string, 
and your fifth string. Mm. Those are the, you need to, when you're starting to memorize the entire fretboard, start there. Start by learning the sixth string mm. notes and the fifth string notes. Because when you learn the sixth string, you've actually learned the first string as well, because they're the same, they're just two octaves apart. But it's the same note, that's an mm. E and that's an E. So you're gonna have to do your homework on that, but I will put up on the screen where you can uh, learn how to do that. I have done that, I've covered that in a previous lesson. All right, so then the way this works with this E chord shape that we're using here is whatever the note is on the sixth string, whatever that note is, that's where your bar goes, and that's the name of the chord. So if I'm playing third fret, sixth string, and I'm playing that with my bar, so I've got my bar down, here's my E shape, right, and there's my bar, that's a G note, therefore, that's a G chord. Now, I'm still using that E shape, but we don't say E anymore. That's irrelevant now. It's just the positioning of the fingers. Now, everything that I'm doing is a G. So if I play here, I know that's an A note. Therefore, that's an A chord. Now, so far with Caged, we're only talking about major chords. We're not talking about minors or sevens or major seven or any of that. We're just talking about major chords. We can translate it to other chord shapes, but in the beginning, you just want to be able to play your major chords, all of them. So G sharp, you need to be able to play a B flat. You need to be able to play any of your major chords that don't have like a, an extension or anything to, to change that. So that's the first rule is if you're playing the E shape, whatever the note is on your sixth string, that's how you find the chord. So now if I said to you, and you can pause the video and work this out, if I said play a B chord using that E shape, you should, you've got all the information, you should be able to do it. Here, spoiler alert, what, what you would do then is you'd find your B note on the sixth string, which is here, and then you'd bar, and there's your B chord using the E shape. Okay, so so far so good. Now let's move on to the A chord shape. That's the second most important. So I think that these first two, if you get that E shape and the A shape, you've got a lot of territory already covered in terms of being able to play all over the neck. So the A shape, if we look at our A in first position, um, there's two different ways I see this played. The way that you can play it, if you want to play five strings, all five strings, is like this, where I've got all three fingers crammed into the second fret, strings two, three, and four. And that allows that open one string to ring out open string. So now we're back to the open string thing, which is, you know, what we were dealing with with the E chord. And you've also got the open fifth string. These middle strings, however, are behind the fret. So the same principle applies then. If I want, if that's an A and I wanted to play an A sharp, because it's the next step up. And by the way, you can bar this with either your ring finger or your pinky when we get into this next chord shape. Um, I use my pinky. But if I wanted to play an A sharp, I just take that shape and I slide it up, but then I put my index finger where the nut was, because remember, we've got to take that and, and move it up. And so now I've got that, which would be an A sharp or a B flat. So I've got my index finger on the first fret, and then I've got the little bar here, this little triad. Triad is just a three note chord. So I've got that right there. And so that's an A sharp or a B flat. If I go up one more, that's a B. And what's defining it? How do I know it's a B? Well, remember when we were playing the E shape, it's whatever the note name was on our sixth string. If we're playing the A shape, however, it's the note name from your fifth string, where your index finger is. Same kind of thing. When we played with our E shape, it was where our index finger was. Same is true with the A shape, but this time it's on the fifth string. So this note, fifth uh, string, second fret, that's a B note. Therefore, when I'm playing this, using the A shape, I'm playing a B chord. So some of you, if you're new to this, you're already like, whoa, hold on, that's a ton of information. If you think about the variables, we've got two variables to be able to play all over the neck. So I can play a B like this, or I can play a B like this. So that's a B chord using the E shape, this is a B chord using the A shape. And remember, the thing that allowed me to know the name of this chord was where my index finger was on the fifth string for the A shape, and where my index finger was on the sixth string for the E shape. 
And so even if we get nothing else, if you just get this far with Cage, you can play a blues or a country anywhere on the neck. So just as a quick example, if I wanted to play a one, four, five, that's what we call it, like a country or blues uh, in the key of G, for example, the way that you would do it in first position, you'd go like this, G, C, D, right? Real strummy, but you got all these open strings ringing out. What if we were to play that using this uh, this new system that we've got? So let's play a G chord using the E shape. So our C chord would be up here, because we're gonna find the, remember, we gotta find the, the note on the sixth string. And then you can always go this direction two frets to get to your five chord. That's just a little tip for you. Or you can just know that that's the, the D chord that we're looking for. So we have D, G. Now that's a lot of jumping around, right? It works though. There's nothing wrong with it, it's technically correct. But let's take advantage of these neighborhoods that we can create now with our new chord shapes. So we can play a G chord here using the E shape. I can play the C chord using the A shape right here. I'm thinking about neighborhoods now. And when I talk about neighborhoods, I'm talking about where is my nearest neighbor? If that's my G, okay, then the next chord is a C chord. Where's the closest C chord to where I'm at? Oh yeah, there's one right here. And this is stuff you just learn over time. So you've got your G, your C, using the A shape. And then remember what I said, you move up two frets to get to your five chords. There's your D. So there's your C and there's your D, just like before. There's your C and there's your D. So now I've got one, four, five. And there's no open strings with that. So what that means now is I can play I've got, I've, my strumming can be a lot more precise. I don't have open strings to ring out. So I can do things like that. But it also means I can easily change keys. If we're playing a country song in the key of G, G and somebody said, oh, that's too low. Let's go up a half step and play it in G sharp. Well, if you're just down in first position, you're you're in trouble. You're gonna have to get out of capo or something. But you don't have to worry about that if you know the cage system. No problem, I just find my G sharp uh, using the, uh, the same system we talked about. So it would be your, you know, on your sixth string if you're using this E shape. G, there's my, you go up the, to the A chord shape. So there would be my C sharp and there's my D sharp. So it's right there. Now you can see that what, if we go back to G here, you can see that it, uh, when I'm playing the one, four, five, starting on the E shape, it makes a little L shape here. Now I've got another lesson, I'm gonna put that up on the screen, that goes through these two L patterns. And that lesson is gonna make perfect sense now that you understand this logic, you're gonna understand where that, that comes from. But it allows you to quickly find a one, four, five. You can play blues, or rock, or whatever, using the same little uh, system that we've got. So I started in that example, using the E shape, I could start, you know, I could, we could take the same three chords, G, C, and D, but I could start with the A shape. So now I have to find, remember you have to ask yourself, if we're gonna use the A shape, where is the G note on the fifth string? So I know it's up here on the 10th fret. So that means I play my A chord shape there, that's my one, or my G chord, and then where is my four chord? Where's my C chord using the E shape? Well, I know that that's my C note on the sixth string. Remember, when you're playing the E shape, it's where your index finger would be on the sixth string. So there's my four, you go up two frets, there's your five. So now, one, four, five. All in the same neighborhood here. And that's important because you're not jumping around. I don't even have to look at my hands. I can just feel my way around when I'm playing that. All right, so let's add a few more variables to that. So that's two out of the five shapes. Um, and so the next one we're gonna learn is the C shape. I think it's probably the next most useful or most important. These are just my opinions. But if we take the C chord down in first position, same principles apply. Now let's change our fingering. So you're gonna play with your middle finger, ring finger, and pinky. That's kind of hard to do, but it frees your index finger up so that you can slide it up and 
you can bar with your index finger. Now the good news is you only have to bar the first three strings with your index finger to play this shape. And so that's how you play the C shape. Um, in you know by re repositioning it now remember you're not playing all five or all six strings you're only playing the top five five four three two and one but how do I know what the name of this chord is how do I know what chord I'm using in this case we're gonna still use the fifth string and it's where our pinky is so if I'm playing uh, let's let's play here for example where my pinky is which is the uh, seventh fret, fifth string, this note is an E note, right? It's an E. So that means that this is an E chord. There's also an E note in this chord uh, where my middle finger is. So where my middle finger is and where my pinky is, those are the same note. That's an E, that's an E. That is my E chord. And I'm showing you in two positions so that you've got two anchor points that you can use uh, to, to visualize this. And so this is the conventional way of playing the C shape, but that's not the way that I usually play it. And actually, I see a lot of people not using that because that's kind of awkward uh, when you're playing, especially if you're standing up. It's kind of an awkward angle to try and get your pinky in. Most people play this shape like this, just the top four strings. That's enough of the chord that you need. In fact, with that, you can go can hammer on and get the Keith Richards thing. Um, so that's what's going on now. If I'm playing this way without using my pinky, remember I have to, it's wherever my middle finger is. It's that note. That's the name of the chord. So that's an E note. Now that's on the second string. Uh, so that's where, that would be the next string you'd want to memorize. If you've got your fifth and your uh, sixth strings memorized, now you've got your, you need to know your second string. But that's, that tells me the name of the chord if I'm using just this little shape here. So that's the C shape. So let's move on to the G shape. Now the nice thing about the G shape is it's basically the same as the A shape. They share the same little triad. It's gonna make sense as we get into it. Let's look at a G chord in first position. That's how you learn to play it, right? Well, look at what's going on. Look at first of all, look at all the open strings there. Four, three, and two are open. Then you've got this guy here on the third fret. Same one on the third fret, six string. So those are both G notes. And then you've got one here, which is the uh, second fret. That's a G chord in first position. Now that's a really hard chord shape to try and make like using all six strings, using the, this cage system. Nobody ever does that. Nobody plays it that way. Here's how people do use it though. They take this, they take it and they split it into two parts. So instead of thinking about the G shape like this, which is not very practical, this would be a B chord using the G shape. I'll explain why in a minute. But the way that you want to do it is you want to think of it like this. You've got that, which is easy to play, just a bar here on the fourth fret, and then I've got my pinky on the seventh fret. That's a B chord uh, this way. The other way is like this. So I've got that same bar, but then I've got my, in this case, for this B chord, I've got my uh, ring finger on the sixth fret, fifth string. That's a lot, a lot more practical. That I can grab easily. This I can grab easily. This I cannot grab very easily, and, it would, and it's kind of... Uh, redundant, a lot of redundant notes anyway. So how do I know that's a B chord? Well when I'm playing this shape, uh, where my pinky is, that's a B note, it's on that first string. Remember the first string is the same as your sixth string, so if you've got that sixth string memorized, you've got your first string. So that's one way to think about it. The other way is, uh, let's look at a B chord using the A shape. That's, that was uh, the second shape we learned. There's a B chord using the A shape. Look at where my bar is. My pinky is there. I can replace that, and I'm playing the G shape. Now, I'm playing those same three notes that I played with the A shape. So that gives me like another anchor kind of. I, you start to connect this stuff. You go, okay, I'm playing, it, playing this chord shape, and then I've got this little extension. You can think of it that way. Or you can just play the, uh, the little... Um, the triad there. And then watch this. Then I just went to the four chord. 
whoa, mind blown. What did I do? I went from that shape to the C shape using it the way that I showed you, like the, the short, the easier way, the more practical way. So now it's starting to maybe gel in your head a little, a little bit, even if you don't fully understand everything, like, oh, okay. The other way that you can use this G shape is this way. I see this used all the time. This, another good example of that would be Wind Cries Mary by Hendrix. So he, he plays like, it's just the A shape, right? And then he goes like this. And then he goes into the G shape. See, it's the same, same triad for both of them, but he changed that bass note. You can also know the name of the chord from this triad by whatever that third string is. So in that case, that's a C note. Just like that's a C note. Just like that's a C note. So that's another little anchor point. You can start to learn these things. But in the beginning, just try and get your, your E shape and your A shape based on the fifth and sixth string. That's a really good starting point. So that's how the G chord shape works. One other thing I should mention about the A shape, I didn't say this, but the A shape, uh, when we, when I was showing you that, like a C chord using the A shape, there's actually kind of two parts to it. I think of this as like the bottom part, and then this is the top part. And if you think back to your A chord down here, it's the same thing. You can see where that's coming from. But this is that top part of that A chord shape. And that's a little triad that's very used. It's used quite a bit. And if you wanted to play this triad and needed to know the name of that chord, it's whatever that third string is. Again, which we just talked about. Same with, with this triad here, right? It's the third string that defines the name of the chord. That's a C note, therefore, that's a C triad. That same note is a C note, so therefore, that's a, that's a triad. So, that's uh, another way of looking at that A chord shape. It's the top part of the A shape. Uh, so you can think of the G chord as having the G chord uh, top part and then the G chord bottom part. That's how I think of it. And then same for the A. All right, so thus far we've learned the C shape, the A shape, the G, the E shape. We've got one more, which is the D shape. And the D shape, um, you can imagine your D chord in first position. If we're just playing that triad, just the top three strings like that, all you really need to know is the note name on your second string. That's your D note, that's your D chord. Therefore, if I slide that up two frets, that's my E note, that's my E chord. That's an F, that's my F chord. And so that's a real practical, that's probably the most uh, practical use case of that D chord shape. The other way that I see it um, used is to play the bottom part of that. So let's take a G chord for example and let's look at playing a, a G chord using the E shape here. We're going to start with that. And then if I play the G chord using the D shape, that would be up here because this note, second string, is that's an E or a G note rather. Now, what I would have to do if I wanted to play the, the full chord is I'd have to play it like this. So I'm, I changed the fingerings here. I've got my pinky, ring finger, and middle finger um, making that D shape. But then I've got to come up here and bar strings five and four on the, the fifth fret. So that would be another way of thinking about playing that G chord using the D shape. Now that's a really difficult thing and you wouldn't really do that. That just doesn't make sense. But what you would do, what, uh, what you might do rather, is play it like this. So what I'm doing there is I'm taking the bar there on the fifth fret, just playing strings five and four. And then all I'm doing here is I'm playing strings uh, three and two. I'm not playing that, that one string. I'm just playing those middle five strings. It's, a, it's more like a D5, it's more like a D power chord, but it allows you to do things like... Kind of a country rock thing that you might hear. When, you, when I talk about a power chord, it means it's just eliminating the third interval, so there's no third there. It's neither major nor minor, it's just like a punchy power chord. And that sounds good with a lot of overdrive. So that's a D chord. Uh, or, I'm sorry, that's a G chord using the D shape. A, a connection point for this would be, well, as I mentioned, uh, the way that we can define what that is is where my pinky is, that second string, that's a G note, therefore that's a G chord. Same is true on the fourth string, where my uh, index finger is. 
that is a that's also a G note. Therefore, that's a G chord. If you want to connect this to another chord shape, though, look at those two strings, strings five and four, which are on that fifth fret. We've used these before when we played the E shape. Look at this. Those, there's those same two notes. So we can we can connect this shape to your E shape. That's just another little connect. I'm trying to make all the little connection points I can think of. Um, and I go through that more thoroughly in that part two video. It's really, con that whole video is all about connecting them. It's like Legos from one to the next. But I wanted to start with this video so that you can at least understand how to find these different shapes just on their own without having to connect them to anything. So you should be able to, if I were to quiz you and say, I want you to play a D chord using the C shape. You should be able to do that now. You should be able to pause this video and, and play a D chord using the C shape. Remember, if we're playing the C shape, if we're doing the proper way with, the, with all five strings, you put your pinky on the fifth string and you find that D note on your fifth string. So I know it's there. That way, that therefore, that's my D chord using the C shape. And if I look at that for a minute and go D chord, oh yeah, when I play D chord like this, like the cowboy chord, it's there, it's in there. This is just a little more full version of that. It's adding a little extra color to it. But that same triad is still there. So quiz yourself on that. Try and find, using all five of those shapes now, find a, an A chord, a G chord, an E chord, an F chord, just try and find those chords using all five shapes. It's going to be clunky at first, and it may not even be very easy to fret them. But what the, the point of this isn't necessarily a technical thing so much as it is an understanding thing. You have to just be able to understand what I'm talking about. So going forward, when I re reference things, which I do all the time in all the lessons, at some point I'll say, okay, I'm, I'm playing a, an A shape, but I'm playing a C chord. You'll know what I'm talking about. That's going to make more sense to you. And once you can see that as being a C chord, and that as being a C chord, and this as being a C chord, and this as being a C chord, and you can see when I when we say C chord, you it, the whole fretboard lights up. You have all these options. What you can do with that then is when you're playing a lead, let's say you're playing in the pentatonics, good old C major pentatonic. I can see all of those C chords now that I just showed you, and I can use those as notes to land on or to just highlight as arpeggios. Right? And I can work those into my leads that way. That's just one way to do it. We can also connect all of our scales, major scale, any scale. You can, you can link them back to these chord shapes. So I want to conclude this video right here, just giving you the overview of the cage system, how you find these chord shapes. I would recommend you move on to the next video now, how to link them all up. Um, and then there's some practice material, which is really good um, for, for being able to play them, uh, which has a jam track and everything so that you can practice playing these chord shapes in different spots.